Mr. Clyde Forcer, welcome to the Voices of a Generation. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us, for committing to do this. This is a project that is near and dear to my heart, and I'm so happy to have you as our first guest here um, in Prince William County. And I just want to dig in to get to know a lot more about Clyde Forcer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to jump into this. Okay. Um, funny thing is that I know you have over 41,000 followers on on Facebook alone, and I know you're all over other social media. I know that you are a foodie. Yes. <laughs> you, are, you go by the President of the United States of America. That's correct. <laughs> I know that you're an actor, and I think you've been coined to be a comedian as well. Um, but I know there's so much more about yes. Mr. Forcer. So mm -hmm. today, I want to get into all of those things. Okay, but please, call me Clyde. Mr. Forcer. Is my late dad, and only the bill collectors call me Mr. Foster. Oh, okay, well, Clyde, it is. Because <laughs> I'm not here to collect bills, but I am here to pick your brain. Okay, well, okay. go ahead, pick away. <laughs> All right, so um, my first question for you, uh, or invitation, is for you to tell us a bit more about who Clyde is, from little boy to this man. If you could just put that all together really quick okay. and let us know who you are to the core. Well, as a man, I'm still growing. I like to categorize myself as an adult male, okay, because um, uh, a man is very complex, and you never stop growing as a man once you become an adult male. Um, I am the third child of six. Uh, my parents had uh, three boys and three girls, and I'm the only surviving boy now. And I have uh, three queens <laughs> as sisters. And um, I had an amazing childhood. Yeah. Amazing childhood. Um, I don't think there was anything, um, you know, out of the norm. We played, you know. Uh, of course, we didn't have social media back then, but our social media was Etch-a-Sketch. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so if we uh, wanted to unfriend somebody, we just stopped talking to them for a little while, and then we friended them back and played with them, you know, in a yeah. couple hours. But um, other than that, I had an amazing childhood. Um, things didn't start changing for me until I became uh, an adult. Okay. Adult male. That's when life started. Mm. Um, I've been married uh, once mm -hmm. before, you know, I'm divorced. I'm married a second time. Uh, I have three children. I have uh, two biological uh, boys and I have uh, one daughter who's not my biological daughter, but she is my daughter. Yeah. She is. And um, I have uh, three grandchildren. Okay. I have uh, one grandson and two two, oh, three granddaughters. Yeah, let me get that right. <laughs> yeah, why don't you start counting, yeah. Um, basically, uh, I like to have fun. Yeah. Um, I like to encourage everyone that's around me and I like to leave them with something that will, you know, enhance them. So, and like you said, an actor, you know, my, my whole thing as an actor is to see people smile. Because if people are smiling, then they're not angry yeah. or sad. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's too much sadness in this world, so I want to do my part to put a smile on it. You know, I might not be able to change the world, mm -hmm. but I want to be able to do my part while I'm here. Yeah. I love that. So you talk about your childhood. Where did you grow up? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Yes, Brooklyn, New York. Um, still have family in Brooklyn and in New York. Um, I have two sisters still residing in New York. Uh, my third sister is in Pennsylvania, and uh, I go back there frequently yeah. because my grandchildren are in there, and I was just there this past Christmas um, at Santa Claus. <laughs> I think I saw that on social media. <laughs> yeah, and um, that was special. 
Uh, that was a privilege to be Santa Claus too, yeah. because um, you know Santa Claus is uh, jolly, sure. and uh, you know about spreading joy, you know, and um, that's something that I do naturally anyway. Yeah. So for me to put on a red suit, you know, yeah. that I just got extra hugs and smiles, <laughs> you know, because of it, you know, yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. So you're here in Prince William County, um, which is one of the reasons why we're talking to you, right? We want to get to know more about the wisdom that lies right here in the county that we live in. And, of course, I know that you do a lot here. You're busy. You're involved with a lot. Everyone seems to know your name, right? <laughs> which I think is absolutely fascinating. Um, so I want to just ask a few questions because I've heard you speak with, uh, with John before about um, just taking it back to the protest um, in Prince William County and, and the impact that you made whenever you were speaking there. So I want to start there and we're going to end this conversation on a lighter note, but I want to get into that because you seem to be extremely passionate about our youth about issues that go on in the community, and especially communities of color. So I want to go back to that day that you were out speaking um, at one of the protests here in the community. What was that like for you? It was very emotional uh, for me, as well as uh, the people there. You know, there was a lot of uh, anger. Um, I was angry too, but there's a way that you have to channel your um, anger, especially if you want a voice. Uh, if you want your voice to be heard, and um, you can't scream at someone that you want them to listen to you, that's that's not going to happen. And what I tried to do was calm the crowd down to a point where uh, the people that they wanted to listen to them, you know, would actually take the time to listen to them. Yeah. And so sometimes someone has to, you know, be like the voice of reason, quote unquote. And then there were counter protesters there too that um, I was asked to speak to. And I had a chance to speak to the counter protesters wow. too, to enlighten them. And um, after I spoke to the counter protesters, some of them had a change of heart. Wow. That's yes. Big. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I took the time to actually explain to them in a calm voice. You know, because everybody wants to be heard. Yeah. So I listened to them. And after I listened uh, to them, then, you know, I, um, I gave them some nuggets, too, that they were totally unaware about. Sure, sure. Yeah. When you left that day and reflected back, how did you feel? I felt a little sense of accomplishment because, uh, like I said, some of the people did listen. And um, I had a chance to go in and speak to the county supervisors, and they listened. and. I um, actually heard uh, from someone else that the supervisors were listening to me and they said that I spoke very well. So for them to take the time to listen means that it probably sunk in and um, you know, they, they did give it some thought. I don't know what type of action came about, but at least they did listen and um, I actually had the opportunity to speak to the police chief of Prince William County too. And when I spoke to him, he actually called his deputies over and he wanted me to speak to his deputies too because he told his deputies, he said, you guys need to listen to this guy right here because one of the things that I you know, would like to establish between the um, police and the community is, I guess, kind of like a friendship because um, when the police are called in, you don't want them to escalate a situation. You want them to de-escalate. And if they come in a certain neighborhood and they feel like they know the pulse more or less of the neighborhood, I, I think that they have a tendency to be less um, uptight themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you come into a situation as a, as a police officer, you don't know what you're going to walk into. But if you come in and, like I said, and you know some of the people in the neighborhood, you know, I want the police to know my name and I want to know their sure. names too. I want to establish a relationship, yeah. you know. So that's one of the reasons why I spoke to them too, to try to do that. Yeah. I think that's really great. Um, it's interesting to talk about the police because 
it's important that we know our audience, right? <laughs> and it's no different with police. They, sh they should know the community that they're policing. They're people too, you know, it's just that they have, uh, you know, a different job. And once they take off the uniform, they go home to their families Absolutely. and everything too. Okay, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Um, I am known for asking questions that tug at the heart because I'm curious about people and how we behave and how we operate and the way we think. And I'm more curious about those that are a generation or two older than I am. Okay. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but this is Voices of, our, of a Generation. So. Not, being on the spot is okay. I'm used to the spotlight. <laughs> okay. So, um... I just have a few questions. I want to know just something as simple as what you're most grateful for. I'm most grateful for people appreciating the man that I am. I, I really feel appreciated by others, and, and that makes me feel special. Yeah. yeah. I think that's brilliant to say that because sometimes we don't want to be honest about that. No, I really do appreciate people appreciating the hard right. work and 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 that feels good and it doesn't mean that we're arrogant or any of those no, things. It no, just, not, it's, not, not at all. It's a beautiful experience uh, when appreciation takes place. Being appreciated means that you have impacted someone else in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. And when I talk to people and interact with them, you know, I would like to walk away feeling that I have left a positive impact. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So I'm going to ask you another question. You're in Prince William County. Being in this county, how long have you lived here? 18 years. 18 years. What are you most proud of about being here? Most proud of? Um, I would say the, the relationships that I've built since I've been here. I've built a lot of uh, relationships. I've met a lot of people, um, but um, and I know a lot of people too, yeah. <laughs> but, but the relationships that I've built, you know, the, the real solid ones, I'm, you know, most proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you work with the youth at all here in our community? Not uh, at, per se as, okay. let's say, like a youth group mm -hmm. or something like that, but when I do see youths, I do take the time to, in, I invest my time in them because some of them are misguided and uh, they need a little direction. Sure. So I try to give them that and if they give me their time, I make sure that I invest my time in them. Yeah, yeah. All right, so when we talk about youth, um, we've all had our day, right? So when you were in your late teens, early 20s, <laughs> I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there and actually tell me all the things that you did that was a little mischievous. But I do want to know: um, Did you have a mentor in those years of your life? Yes, I did. And uh, matter of fact, one of the mentors that I had, his name was Odell Floyd, okay. and he was 15 years senior to me. And I thought that that was really special that an older guy would take the time with me to uh, give me some nuggets and one of the things that he uh, told me that always uh, stayed with me and he said, Clyde, he said, there are going to be people that like you and dislike you for the same reason. I was 17 when he told me that. I didn't, I heard him but I didn't, you know, fully understand, you know, um, the impact of that, but as I got older, I really understood that and, and, and what it meant. And um, I'm comfortable yeah. in my own skin. You know, some people are not really, you know, comfortable in their own skin. And um, the opinion that uh, should value most is your own about yourself. Absolutely. Wow. That's, that's big when you say there will be people that will like you and dislike you for the very same reason. Yes. That hit me. I like that's a because you can do good. Yeah. Uh, you you take some of the uh, great leaders. Uh, I give you one, Martin Luther King. Sure. There were people that loved Martin Luther King for what he did, yeah. what he stood for, yeah. and they hated him for the yeah. same reason. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. yeah. It's just good that you got that advice at such a early age, and obviously it stayed with you. Yes, it did. Um, because otherwise, you're kind of confused when you're getting the accolades and the praise, and right. And then suddenly, for the same very thing that you've been getting all the accolades and the praise for, yeah. Now someone is, you know, they're coming after you for, right. for it. So you get this at a young age, and it's able to kind of guide you, and there's no surprise. It's no surprise. Well, you know something, I've kind of been like my own man, even at an early age, because where, where I grew up, there was a lot of drugs, and they were, but I never got involved in drugs, or smoking or drinking, so I'm proud to say that uh, I've never used drugs, and I've never smoked, and you know, when um, it was brought to my uh, face, you know, I, I said no. Yeah, wow. I can't say that I actually said no. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, everybody. But I think it's people. wonderful. My sister, that's how she is as well. And I always look at you all and I'm like, I, no one tempted me. I just right. chose to do, you know, I drink wine, you know, do my thing. But just, I think it's beautiful it. that that was, you made a choice, you stand by it, you don't break under the peer pressure. You know, because I see others that got sucked into that. Right. right? And so it's really nice to see that, that you don't have to do that. You can make your own decision. I've always had my oh. own mind. I've yeah. always walked my own way. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Beat your own drum. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so a couple other questions here. Um, oh, what kinds of things in this generation, this, this decade that you're living in now? Okay. What type of things make in this generation that make me happiest. I think the ability to be able to talk and relate to um, people outside of my generation okay. and to be the difference because I don't want to just make a difference. I want to be the difference in other people's lives. Um, Eric Clapton made a song called Change the World. Mm -hmm. I love that song. And um, one of my favorite songs, and one of the things that I realized that we all have the ability to change the world. Yes. But we have to take the time to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Yes. You've been changing it. One person at a time. One person at a time. One person at a time. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. Okay. Um, what are the most rewarding things about getting older? For me, is the woman in my life that has my back. Wow. Wow. Tell me more about that. <laughs> Well, my name is Candace, okay. and um, we've been married for 21, almost 22 years, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've known each other since elementary school. Oh my, this is beautiful. We've uh, both been married, divorced, and um, you know, it, it's, it's something when you come home to someone and you know that you are appreciated by them. You know, we still have lots of fun together. Yeah. We, you know, we love hanging out together. Yeah. You know, and um, that 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 is something special because not everybody has it. A lot of people want it, mm -hmm. but they don't have it. And I realized that I do have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I know this is definitely not that type of show, but I have to, you know, piggyback off of what you're saying. Okay. I do believe that a lot of people do want it, and. I they don't know how to have it, or they don't know how to maintain it. So I have to ask you, how have you maintained what you now have? Having fun. Having fun. You gotta have fun, you know, because a relationship is two individuals coming together, and they have made either a verbal or you know a written commitment, you know, that they're gonna stay together, and you just have to work at it. Yeah. You know, it's not easy. I'm not going to say that 
you know, everything has been smooth because it hasn't, but we have survived things that would, would have broken up a lot of other relationships, and we both know it. Yeah. And we're grateful for it, and it, it has actually made our relationship stronger. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Well, please tell me I said hello. <laughs> I certainly will. Okay, um, in the world today, when you look around, you know, it's oftentimes bad news. We know, you and I both, we have the energy to look for the good news. Right? Right. We know it's there, right? But we hear the bad. But if you just look at it and you think back over your whole generation, your whole life, and you look at where you are now in this world, what's missing? What do you think the world needs more of? Well, the first thing, um love. People need to be more compassionate towards others. I, I think that, you know, we live in a world where we have more conveniences than we've ever had before, but people for some reason are not as happy, I, I feel, as when we had less conveniences. Um, you know, when we had less conveniences, people actually got together. And, uh, and they, they related. Um, one of the one of my pet peeves that I have is with social media. It, even though I use social media as an actor to network, but I, I don't like to use it as my sole means of communication because you you really can't uh, feel the pulse of a person by a like yeah. or something like that. You either have to have a in person visit or you have to you know talk to them on the phone. That's what a relationship yeah. is, two people relating. That's why a relationship, that's the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we have enough no. healthy you know, relationships and even modeling enough healthy relationships for others to see. Well, what you do with the relationship zone, and like I said, I applaud you for that, uh, we have to get people together. First of all, we need to get them to slow down. Yeah. Because people are moving too fast. Mm -hmm. Get them to slow down and talk and relate and spend time with one another. Yeah. 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 Alright, so I think we're going to take a pause here. Is that okay? We'll take a pause here and I want to make